What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here, showing you part 8 of the React Native Redux tutorial that we've been working on. In the last video, you can check it up in the top right corner there, we looked at building this key buttons component. Now we didn't actually test it because it wasn't complete yet, we didn't connect it to our application state, which is very important because we can't really map out these buttons if we don't get the keys, which is stored in the application state. So let's dive right into that. Here we are at our keysbuttons.js file. I've closed all the other ones to keep everything simple. But I wanted to take this moment to quickly say that I am really appreciating your comments, guys. Like, seriously. Um, if we head over to our main screens here, a lot of people are asking me about the cached images and stuff. And uh, yeah, as I said, the documentation was all in that video, so you can go find out things there. I don't know everything amazingly there, but there's there's a lot of stuff going on there. I do know that this uh, checks if it is the check to see if it's a string is actually there to check if it's a URL. So if it's a URL, it will go prefetch the image. And then otherwise, if it's an asset, in this case, our icon is an asset. It's stored in assets. It is, well, it's fetched differently. So that's just a random fact. Anyway, do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and leave a like in the video and please keep commenting. I love it. Anyway, let's head back to our keys buttons. So in the last video, we were, we basically, we made our whole, um, keys buttons component we just need to connect it to state and add a few things like we need to actually say what the buttons are for this button group etc so i think for a start we need to connect this to the application state and in order to do that we need to import connect from react redux now we've already imported react redux before because we used it in our um in our main app file over here, we used it to get our provider, which has the store, which is over here. And yeah, basically all of that's already sorted. Um, what we need to do now is actually connect stuff. So first of all, we need to, when we export our app, we need to connect it. So we connect and we connect a whole bunch of state stuff to the components. So what goes in here is our our actions and our, our map state to props. So the first parameter would be your map state to props. This is where you map the application state to the props. So you can access the application state via the props. Now we can make this, um, we could actually just say a map state to props. And then above that, we can make a function called map state to props. Which is going to, I need to spell this right, get your, your cases right there. It's going to return, what's well, going to take the first of parameters, it's going to take an object, which is going to be our reducers. So these are our keys and our selected values. Now remember, we made our selected values in our reducers over here. We got our keys from the keys reducer, which gives us this key list, and we got the selected values from the selections reducer, which is everything in here. So let's head back to this. What we basically do is we take those that object of reducers as a parameter, and with that we return the keys and the selected values. So in this case, you return keys, the object keys, but we're just simplifying it down to, to that. So that way we can now access, sorry, this needs to be keys, and selected values, did I spell that right? Hang on, what am I doing wrong? Oh, okay, I didn't actually do anything wrong. I was just ESLint complaining about spaces over there. So what this does is it gives us access to the, the application state and it maps it to the props. So now we could um, head over to this render method and if we wanted to, we could get the, we could actually get all the values now. So we could say um, const uh, keys equals this dot props dot uh dot keys because in this case we get keys from there and you could also say const um you can get the selected key index which was what we need to get in here remember if we go back to our selections reducer we had this selected key index which is something that we it's a payload that we return as part of the initial application state that's what we want to use in this component 
So we can get the selected key index from this dot props dot selected values dot selected key index. Now obviously this is kind of long and messy, so we're going to deconstruct this. And this is quite a process that we're going to do here, but what I'm going to do is remove the whole thing and just show you from the beginning. Let's say const, and remember we want to get the selected values, and we want to get the keys from this dot props. But we also want to get from inside the select this dot props dot selected values. We need to get the selected key index. Awesome! And I need to spread this out a little bit. There we go. Uh, what is wrong here? I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Oh, this is just freaking out because we're not using it yet. So there we go. Now we have basically we've got our selected key index and our keys from the application state. Um, because they have been mapped to the props over here. Another thing we need to do is remember that we set up some actions. Uh, up here in our actions, we had some key actions. And we had the select key index. So remember, every time we push a button in our application, we want to call the select key index to put in a new payload. So we need to import this action from actions. So we're going to do that by saying import select key index that was the action name and we're getting that from actions because we in the actions.index we've exported all so in here we've exported the various stuff so we've exported select key index and that goes uh into this index here and then it gets all exported so we can get it from here so now we need to what did i say yeah it is select key index um oh this is yeah, wait a second. So this is select key index. So that's the action of selecting key index. And this is selected key index, which is the prop of what is the current selected key. So if you think about it, um, if we go down to our button group, if you select, well, you're going to set the selected index, right? So the button group has a property called selected index. And that property we're going to set to be equal to selected key index. If you think about it, just remember you have to get the difference between selected and select. So select is the action, selected is what is currently selected. Now, what we also need to do is handle the on press. But before we do that, so basically in this, we're going to have an on press, which is going to do stuff. And I also want to add in the buttons. So we need to know what the buttons are going to be. So the key buttons. And this is going to make use of our key state. Why did I put a semicolon there? Our key state. So the, the application state has all the keys that we listed here in this key list JSON. What we need to do is set the key buttons. So these key buttons, I'm going to set them up over here. Const key buttons. And now that we have these keys, we can just say this is going to be keys.map. So for each key, we are going to return. Um, well, we're basically going to return the key.key. .key. But remember, we have those big keys. So I'm actually going to open this up here. We have these big keys here. And I don't want to say C sharp slash D, D flat. So if it's a short key, if that's true, I just want to return a slash. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is to say, Look at key dot short key. So that needs to be a capital K. And if that is true, then return the slash. Otherwise, return. Uh, we need to return key dot key. So that is how that works. Excellent. So this should basically return all our our stuff as expected. Um, I will test our application once we have the on press working because we're so close to finishing this. Now we need to actually map our our keys buttons component to this action as well. So we need to the second um, parameter that goes into this connect statement is the actions. So you can import all the actions, but since we're only using one, I'm going to keep it simple and just say I want to put it in my select key index action. So this is the action of selecting a key. Now we haven't done that yet. We're going to do that here in the on press. So 
on pressing the button, we're going to get an index. That's going to be the payload of pressing because there will be an index in the, the press. And then we want to say this dot props dot select key index to have the payload of index. So this index goes into there. And this is how we do it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I know it's a bit rough to comprehend, but basically the buttons are here. They'll have their indexes zero all the way up to 11. And then they'll be mapped. So this is zero, one, two, three, all the way up to 11. So that is how we match that all. And the indexes are important because this has to be in its correct order here. Uh, because when it comes to calculating what cap we want to put it on, we need to have our indexes all sorted out. So this is a lot of business logic kind of vibes going on, even though it's not really a business, but it's a lot of crazy logic going on uh, to get this running. But this is the first step. Now we actually have our full component all done. So our keys button component is complete here. It does everything we need it to do. I think I still need to test this and uh, it's connected to the application state and it's also connected to the actions. So the actions will change the application state according to how we need to do it. So it's almost like saying this select key index is almost, it's basically like saying this dot set state, but because we're using Redux, we need to set the whole application state. And this is how you set the application state. I hope that kind of makes sense. Let me know in the comments if it is a bit confusing and I'll try and answer the questions there. But uh, I just noticed a typo, this needs to be short key. <laughs> Sorry, see this is what happens when you stay to the end of the video, but we're not done yet. We still need to test this application. So let's head over, save this and test. So I'm going to head over to Expo now. Cool, so here I am in Expo and things are busy loading up. I'm going to fast forward to when this is done. Okay guys, and here we have our application. It is running, but it's not working how I expect it to work. Because we expect this key to change based on whatever buttons I press. I'm basically... I'm busy pressing buttons on my phone, so that's why you can see things moving around. So the thing is, if I press it to E, it should change to E. If I press it to uh, between E and D, it should go to D, D sharp slash E flat, but that doesn't happen. And that's because I forgot to do something in my code. So let's quickly head over to Visual Studio. Um, and what we needed to do was set this key over here. Not the key here, but we need to set this text here because I've just hard coded it to C. This text needs to be equal to keys. Um, no, wait, sorry. It's got to be the object. So keys, and then at the index of the selected selected key index, because um, it's looking at the application state keys, and then that's an array. And then the index of selected key index, and then that selected key index is key, is what we need to get. So now we can head back over to Expo. And we should be able to just reload our application by hitting the reload and hopefully this should work as is. Uh, but we will see. I'll speed up to when this is done. And here we have it. Things are actually working now. See if I change the keys and everything, they all are mapped and all the states are managed. And if this is working for you, you know you've done the Redux part right and everything is up and running just as we expected. Now in the next video, we're going to work on doing the capo buttons. I think I'll be able to do that in one video because I'll rush through the whole Redux part just so you can see how it's done again slightly differently and it's very similar it's just we'll do it slightly differently because um, obviously we're not using keys we're using capo indexes and stuff. So I'll, I'm sure I'd be able to run through that one quickly because I've gone through everything in this one because button groups and all of that's the same. Uh, and then we will focus on doing the rest of the application. But yeah, we're getting some good progress now, guys. Um, as usual, leave some comments below. I really appreciate them. And leave a like on the video. And subscribe if you have not so you can see the new episodes that are coming out every day.